So for this particular nerd corner, I'm going to cover Persona 4, a game a bit different from my usual thing, because I like to talk about games you may not have heard of. In this case, I want to talk about it because I can make some really good psychological points with it. And warning, there are spoilers ahead. Stop here if you don't want certain points in the game spoiled. Not the big stuff, but conceptual stuff. Your call. I warned you. Now, for those with me, Persona 4 is a game where you play a high school student in Japan. Whatever. Except, they actually do some cool stuff with it, in the sense that you're dealing with the concepts that revolve around your suppressed desires and emotions and feelings. You know, everybody has these things, the desires you don't like or want to admit to or even think about. But you've had them on that night you're about to go to sleep, you're suddenly like, oh, I want that, oh my god, why do I want that? That sort of thing. Or the relationships you have where you call yourself a friend to somebody, but maybe it's more parasitic than you want to admit. Those sorts of things, all kinds of things like that, even to an issue of sexual identity. Maybe you call yourself straight. Maybe you say you're straight, you think you're straight, but deep down you know that you have a leaning the other way in some regard. You might be a little bisexual, maybe just curious. But it's that thing you couldn't even dare to acknowledge about yourself. That's where the game goes with people and the characters. Imagine if you're just, you know, a person doing your thing and then you get thrust into another world. You, know how you, you don't know how you got there, you don't know what's going on, everything's weird, and then another you just shows up from nowhere, quite literally, and identifies himself as, I'm also you. By the way, all of your deepest, darkest secrets, fears, desires, hopes, dreams, those are the things that I'm all about, publicly and quite awesomely. I love those things. I am the you that you pretend isn't. That guy sits there and, you know, no, that's not true, I don't like those things. You're a sloth, you're just a slut, you're a cheater, you're not going to amount to anything and you know it. He points out everything that you pretend isn't true or that you don't do in some way. Maybe you're a little lazier than you want to admit. Maybe you have cheated on your girlfriend and it's that thing you don't like to think about. He knows those things and he loves them, he exalts them. He is everything that you don't want to be without abandon, without restraint. And the entire time he's insisting, no, I'm just as you as you are. We're the same. You are this as much as I am that. You want to deny that. You know, that's not true. I'm not that. Well, in this game, when you do that, it isn't you anymore. It becomes something else. Your dark side now freed, untethered. It rampages. Set up a good boss fight, I think. But the core issues we get to with a game like this, surprisingly, involves... If you don't know what I'm about to say, I encourage you to look it up. Jungian Psychology, Carl Jung's work. He talks about the higher soul and the lower soul. He expands on the idea of the id and turns it into the shadow, which is much, it's less just your negative side, and it's more about desires suppressed. It's more about like thoughts and feelings one doesn't admit to. It's not just the negativity. It's the negativity one does not want or admit to which is where he believed a lot of psychological issues come from, the sides of the self that are unacknowledged and driven into darkness. And that's just one angle it covers, one thing it gets into. The other is the interplay between the id, or the shadow, and the ego, the higher thoughts, the higher mind. Those parts of you that are more noble, perhaps, the parts of you that are the you, if you will, that you think of when you think of you. The thoughts that are more good and noble, perhaps. The thoughts that are more reasonable, rational. The thoughts that you like to think of as you, the ego. It is the interplay between all of that and the shadow, the darker sides of you, the things that you don't admit to. That interplay, according to Jung, causes a lot of problems. And this game is a metaphor for that. It's sort of an external instead of internal. There's monsters and there's bosses and all that stuff which becomes a metaphor for the internal struggles that this creates with the suppressed darkness and the perceived light. How you create an interplay that is negative between them. And then the game goes further. The game tells you how to address that. Again, through the metaphor, of course, of the game plot, but it tells you how to address these things in the sense of you cannot suppress your dark sides. They're there whether you suppress them or not. You must admit to them, accept them, and master them. First admitting to them, as we all know for anything, you know, you can't solve a problem until you admit it exists. That is fundamental to life. And that applies to the mind as much as the body, the soul, or the external anything. Anything at all. If you don't admit it's a problem, you can't fix it. But once you admit to the problem, you have to accept it. That is a part of you. 
that is a thing you feel. You don't like it, but, I mean, no matter how dark it is, that you won't harm yourself by admitting to yourself that it is there. It's not like you're going to change just by saying, this is a part of me. Because step three is mastery. That is where you take this part of yourself that you don't like. Maybe you learn to like it. Maybe it's a part of yourself that if you have a sexual issue, maybe you think, all right, I'm bisexual and I'm afraid of it. Maybe you learn to accept it. Maybe that, all right, I am bisexual and that's me. Or you have an urge, you know, that's darker. I'm not even going to give any specifics, just fill in the blanks. A darker urge, one you don't want to admit to or can't accept, then you control it, you master it, you take hold of it, and rather than it saying, that doesn't exist, that, that doesn't exist, la la la, you say, no, that does exist, I need to master that, control it, and not act on it. It is there, and I am the master of it and me. It's taking authority for yourself, and responsibility, both. It is saying you are the master of yourself. You don't have to live in fear of these things. You control them. They have no power over you once you admit them. They are yours. That's what it really comes down to. These are not an alien being, like suppressing them makes them. It's not this other thing inside of your head. Not when you admit to it. Not when you say, no, that's not this thing in the darkness that I should be afraid of. It's a part of me that I need to understand and then change. Because once you admit it, and understand it, it's easy to change. It's a part of you. You're the master of it. Who cares, right? It might take a lot of work, but in the end, it's not impossible. That's what matters. And not only is this not impossible, but it is worth it to try. Maybe you can't change it on your own. That could happen. Maybe it's a psychological issue, but you can at least try. And then if you can't fix it on your own, you can know to reach out for help. You can know that this isn't something you can fix on your own. Maybe you do need help, but you know now. And again, you can't have gotten to the step of getting help if you never admit it to the problem at all. All of that, like I said, comes from the game Persona 4. Like, I went a bit away from that idea, but that is the game, really. Also, I never actually went away from it. All of the game sort of works as a metaphor, and yeah, it's sort of a cheesy JRPG, fine, but it's also a metaphor for psychological battles against one's darker sides. Not crushing them and defeating them, but understanding and accepting them. And I think we can all learn a little something from that message. That we shouldn't fight our inner demons so much as work with them to become better. Why fight to destroy your inner demon when you can redeem it? Hmm? Just something to think about.